Hey guys, it's Ellen here and welcome to my channel. You know what's coming up? Yes, Valentine's Day! So I decided to make some more Valentine card ideas for you guys. I go over this step by step. I teach you how to draw this little um, heart floral Valentine's card. But if you're a Patreon member, you could download the traceable and I have a bonus one there. And it's very simple, very easy to do. You guys can totally do this. If you can paint stems and leaves and hearts, you can do these cards. And they're so cute and sweet. I think anyone would love them. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorial is up. It's kind of sporadic, as you know. <laughs> it's my life. Um, and also, please check out my Patreon. Uh, boop, right there. If you want to check it out for downloads, ad-free videos. And every week on Thursday, I have exclusive tutorial over there on my Patreon. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, to start with, I'll go over supplies. I have two pieces of Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper. They're four and a half by six inches. Um, that way you could just take them and put them on a cardstock that is like another color. Like I have red here, you would just tape it down later on in red or pink, whatever color you want. Um, I have a heart drawn out here and I just put the masking fluid around it because we're gonna paint throughout the heart but not paint the outside of it. Um, so just get this cheap little uh, masking fluid. I think I have a link to it on my description box. It's like $4. If you don't have that, you can tape it out and whatever, or you can do like a cutout stencil on paper and then tape that down and do that instead. Or just cut out the, the heart itself on the paper afterwards. And you can just glue that down on the paper. Um, for this one, I taped down the middle part right here with two pieces of scotch tape and then I drew out the the um, hearts. If you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable, but I'll just teach you how to draw. Basically, I'm gonna tape down the middle and we're just gonna basically have like heart vines and stems, whatever you wanna do. So here's the card, here's the middle, and we're just gonna draw hearts. Whatever you draw here, you can just flip and have it on the bottom. So you can have a heart with just leaves, right? Leaves and a heart. Um, I drew some going this way, some behind it, some branched off with hearts. Just kind of like have them going like that, outward. It's a little sloppy, but you'll see as I paint and draw it. And then you just flip this whole design you do here and do it in the bottom. So it's the same, but it's going backwards. Or and you can add a little more embellishments if you want to as you do it. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Like I said, you can just kind of like feel where you want to put the, the branches and whatnot. But I would, you know, if you have one side you really like, um, just do that. And it doesn't have to be like branches, you know, with hearts, it could be flowers, it could be combination of the two, um, you know, whatever works for you guys. So I'm just showing you ideas that I like. And I also have a bonus um, sketch for Patreon members. Uh, that's a like floor with some hearts. You can't see them in my tracing paper, but <laughs> um, so it's another kind of card you can download. All right. So I have my Princeton number eight and number four um, Velvet Touch series brush. I love the Velvet Touch series; they're synthetic, but they feel like you know, like real um, sable brushes. Sable watercolor brushes are very, very expensive, like Kalinsky brushes. Um, if you get really good at watercoloring and you really want to spend the money on them, those are the brushes to get. But you really have to take really good care of them because they're very expensive. Um, so I have the four and the eight. Uh, my paint palette here, I'll be using Bright Rose, right? Magenta, some olive green. Um, I'll be even mixing some cadmium yellow here and there with that. So really it's just simple for the first one. We've got the, the, got the items drawn out here. You see my little sketch. You can actually leave in the pencil marks too if you want to just do that and kind of pencil. People get really frustrated with water. I've been seeing a lot of people getting really hardly frustrated with watercolor and I keep trying to tell them, um, really, you know, I'm gonna grab a s scrap here. If you're having a hard time just painting it, well, draw and then paint it. So you could draw, just for example, this is taped down, but 
uh, it doesn't have to be painted everything you could draw out those hearts with the vines with a nice marker like this a sharpie or a micron pen and then you can just flush in and I'm sorry to flush in I keep saying flush in wash in I don't know why I'm saying flush in my, my brain's not working well these days <laughs> wash in the color um like this you know it's almost like a doodle and it doesn't have to be in the lines it could be out of the lines but if you're feeling frustrated but you still want to paint with, play with watercolor you just go ahead and do that and that's a really cool look too vice versa with pencil i mean pencil and um it doesn't have to be ink it could be pencil there are a lot of watercolorists um you even see a few on here on uh, youtube that pencil a lot down and then you're just going in and filling in the color area right they're keeping the pencil there they're not actually erasing it and they're just going in and filling in the area so you got either one choice so don't get too frustrated about painting everything so if you want a really tight leaf for some of these I'm actually going to use some of my um, olive green gouache too and water it down I, need, I like to combine the olive green gouache with the olive green um, just the gouache watercolor has a nice pretty green color to it I would use the number four if you're gonna start with that skinny little control of the vine this has a nice control with this brush I'm just gonna fill in all the vine areas you see that and you can also control making the leaves and basically just simple leaves are just these curved leaf shapes now it is a very pointy brush so the control is a little different than if you had used the Princeton 8 but it's tiny also so see how you control it'll zoom in for you so now that these are still damp and you have some control with this brush if you wanted to embellish it a little more grab some of this Prussian blue or indigo blue and make that green a little bit darker just paint up a nice dark green and you can just kind of tap in you know I wouldn't say flush I wouldn't say blue you just kind of tap in the edges of the leaves it just gives it a little extra something it's just a way to stylize your leaves it can be flat like this or you can go in and have them have some values that are darker and lighter or medium just trying to give you guys ideas to change it up to make it kind of like your thing you know you eventually want to get to a point where you're creating your own stuff um, and how you do it how do you do that well I have people have asked me privately and I'm like telling them if you're getting kind of can't figure out what to do I'm like the best thing is just to go look out your front door or around you so you can start to paint things that you see around you like I'm not kidding teacups and um, your room <laughs> I know it sounds silly but I love illustrations of rooms um, they look pretty just the paint your, your chair your couch or your the pet might be a little more difficult for people um, objects simple objects like fruit you have in the house I'll go outside so I'm just filling in these uh, leaves just like this and go back in and grab this little dark color oops fixing the tip here put it in the stem part just kind of putting it in the edges there while it's still damp if it's dried you can go back over the leaf and put a little water on it and it can do the same thing what I mean by that let me pick a leaf that's probably dry this one's probably dry I'll just go put some water on it not too much if it's too much you see it's too shiny I'll just lift up the extra water and then grab that dark paint and then I can flood that in there I'll flood it in there so it's a nice little look if you can see a little bit darker a little darker zoom even more you see how dark that is and then kind of like bleeds into the other one this is when you get into the minute details so you can make your card take you forever and look very 
professional if you're making a very special card for somebody. Or you don't have to do that. <laughs> you know, you can grab this bigger brush, which is the Princeton 8, and make it more loose. So this tip is going to be as tight as the other one, and you're going to end up with looser leaves. Right? It's not as sharp and pointy, and so it's going to have that loose look. If you like the loose look, you do that. If you like the tighter look, do the other one. And so that we did that, and we're going to go and grab, I have my bright rose. I love this color. It's so intense. If that's too intense for you, I always suggest people add a little bit of this cadmium yellow, and you get more of a blush tone. You know, you could still go back in and add that bright rose, but it would just kind of dull it down just a touch. Again, you can fill this, I got my eight here, the whole entire heart in. And we can do the same thing that we did with the leaves. Grab a darker color. I have magenta here, Quinacridone magenta. I'll add a little yellow to that. So you make it mixed with a little bit of water, not a ton, and you can kind of hit the edges of that heart. And it will bleed in there on this paper. Now that is the end of the trick. Sometimes people get frustrated that it doesn't come out the same because it's paper. It really comes down to paper. Um, the quality of the paper is going to make a huge difference in wet on wet media. If you're painting a flat tone color like this, just simple, flat, pretty little heart, you don't need it. You can go buy a Strathmore or a Canson, really inexpensive paper, just filling in the hearts like this. No special need. But if you want this look, this three-dimensional kind of special look, this paper is the best for that. Um, you can achieve it a little bit on the other papers. It's just not going to look the same. It's going to be different. Let me tell you, I know this because I fought forever. When I was picking up watercolors again, I was using the cheap paper. So why would I spend a ton of money on expensive paper like Arches or some of the other ones? Um, because it's very expensive. So, and I just really hated Arches in the beginning because I wasn't used to the tooth on it and how it soaks up the paper. And then you get used to it. You play around with it. Um, I also play around with hot press. And that's a whole different animal. So here I did more of a red tone. I had some magenta. I added some yellow. If you have reds, you can make a more of a red heart. And I did the light color in first, and then the red bleeds in. See that? You can create that three-dimensional look. And it doesn't have to be, you know, having that three-dimensional look. It could have be flat. There's many ways to do it. I don't want you to get you guys uh, bogged down and frustrated on um, why it's not coming out the same. There's a lot of variables, how much water you're putting in on the paper. You know, you, you constantly have to watch with that too. Like sometimes when you're bleeding in the color, I've talked about this um, while it's damp, if the, if the color you're bleeding into the other color is too wet, it's just going to You want a little more concentrated so you get just a little bleed, not too much like this one. And if it's not concentrated, it just goes haywire. So now I'm doing a little red hearts. It's good to have a variety of pinks and reds if you're going to do this. Just a sweet little look. Very simple though. Vines or stems with hearts instead of flowers, right? And then I would put down the foreground some different hearts. You know, play around with colors. It doesn't, like I said, you can mix in hearts and you could actually put in some flowers in here too. It didn't have to be all hearts. I just thought it'd be kind of fun just to keep it all in that Valentine type, type of theme. I'll just keep filling in all the little hearts. So you see me, I mix my reds. I like to mix the cadmium yellow with the magenta, as you see right here. And I get my red. And there's not much water in this, very minimal, minimal water. And see, I could do two pinks, two pink hearts next to each other, but I'm changing up with the red. And this is 
really red right there in the front, right? You want to kind of balance out your colors across um, whatever you're creating. It could be all one-sided of pinks and then all one-sided reds, but I like to balance out the color. What I mean by balancing it out is that you're you're putting the colors throughout the design. So I've got reds here, here, and over here, and pinks over here and over here. And then it looks more like a balanced design. That's kind of a trick when you're creating patterns. Um, I create patterns a lot because I design fabric. Um, if you haven't seen any of my fabrics, go on clothworks.com. I'll put a link, actually, um, in the description box today. But um, I don't think I have three lines in there. I don't, and I don't know, depending on... It, they do have a link to where you can get it in the stores near you. I have a... I don't know. There's a new floral, I think. Floral? A pattern design that's out now. I can't remember. <laughs> it's going to be kind of tricky. Okay, so I'm adding a heart down here. And you can look at it and say, do I want to add more? Do I want to add more leaves? Play around with it. And the leaves don't have to be the same colors. You can make them, you know, more turquoise, whatever. I'm just adding in some leaves down here. Just feel like it needs to be filled in a little more. I don't think I had this in the sketch that you can download, but you can see I always like to paint as I go kind of too. I kind of go with the general sketch sometimes, and then sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just like to wing it. People ask me all the time, are you prepared? I'm like, sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes it's good just to play and see what happens. It's kind of the best. So like I said, you want to just do this on one side if you drew it out, and then you can flip it and do the same thing. I don't think you need to see me draw another one. I'm just going to put some little sprays here. You know, as I paint, I feel like, oh, it needs something, you know. Little sprays of greens. Just see, that was just very simple to do that. And then you can make the leaves darker or lighter, depending on what you want to do in certain areas. You can have veins in them, not have veins in them. The hearts could have polka dots, not polka dots. I just want to keep it simple for you guys today. You know, if you have to make a lot of cards or no cards, or you don't even care about making Valentine's cards, you can use the same concept for anything. It doesn't have to be hearts. It could be, like I said, flowers, uh, anything you want it to do. It could be just leaves. You can make a nice greenery, um, just all greens doing this. And that could be a nice card for somebody who's having a hard day or lost somebody, you know. Everyone's having a hard day. I think I think the world is kind of sick of it already. We're all sick of it. It's just, it's a lot. It's too much. It's too much for a lot of people. And we're just looking for some kind of light at the end of the tunnel. So here I might just go in, throw in, because I am, polka dots. Let's make it cute. Because we can. And then you could also throw in some plaids or stripes. So I'll take that rose. I'll use my skinnier brush. Patterns. I'm obsessed with patterns. I love patterns. <laughs> you could take some and just put in some nice skinny lines going down for stripes. You can see this. Zoom in. So I got the rose more concentrated. Just did some skinny lines. I'll just go over those again. Little skinny lines going down. Do the same thing here, but you could crisscross it so it looks like a plaid. Right? You want to make the hearts have fun. Character. Oh, you don't have to do it at all. You can do some bigger polka dots. It's always good to mix big and small when you're doing designs. Right? So it has a more whimsical feel now that I've added the dots. It would have a more serious feel that I didn't do that. And like I said, you go through and you see if you needed to add. I might add some more greenery. Maybe back here. You know, just get a feel for what works for you. And like a little teeny heart. This brush just has like tiny control. So, like I see, I did a little teeny heart. You could actually do a couple of little teeny hearts, like almost like they were berries, but they're hearts. Little ditzy hearts. 
that just adds another dimension to your design. A lot goes into play when you're designing things. It's color, composition, you know, execution. I talk about this in one of my videos. Um, I think I talk about the three C's of watercolor. Uh, I don't know what I think it was the color composition and creativity or something like that. It just that's how it goes with anything actually. See that red was like muted out because it dries. Watercolor dries later. I went back over that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we can reveal it. Okay, so once you do the other side, you can just lift up the tape. Voila, look how cute that is. And then I would suggest if you haven't, you know, you can use a pen, a marker. I wouldn't even use a paintbrush. You can write in Happy Valentine's Day. I might want to start off to figure out where I'm going to do it with my pencil. So that's what I do usually. And then I can go in with a marker if I didn't want to use paint. like this voila happy Valentine's Day you can go back over that with marker for the second one I have a little fun with this one this is the heart so you can paint I mean you could paint flowers you can make hearts and hearts you know have fun with this one There's so many different varieties I mean you once you've masked off that heart you can go in, I don't even need a sketch for this. You're just gonna just go and paint a bunch of hearts like you did before. You know. You can add the the the, the um the vines and the leaves to them. I'm just gonna go in and throw a bunch of pink ones in at once. Just really wash in some simple, fun hearts. Just like this. So you're cutting off some of the top of them and some of the, and you're showing the bottom of them. Just like that, right? Like you cut it off. So you just show the bottom and you can throw in some more little hearts. The pink, and then grab some red, mix up some red here. Make some more red. Okay, red. Oops. I had too much on my brush. So we're gonna, just going to throw in a bunch of hearts. Hearts within hearts. <laughs> While you mask off a heart like this, you can do anything to it. You can just paint the solid color and add polka dots. You can make plaids, whatever floats your boat, whatever you feel like. So I'm just going in here and adding all these hearts. They're still spaced out from the other one, but I've shown you many other tutorials where you just go in and you can overlap them and have that translucent look. So I would water down the color and you can paint another heart on top of the other heart, just like that. You don't have to get so serious where it's not doing that. See, they're overlapping the hearts. Where it low overlaps, that side gets darker. But, you know, have fun with it. I'm going in little teeny ones. It's already getting filled up. We're going to add some greenery in a second. So the whole premise is that the heart is the flower in both of these cards and everything else is like a typical green plant that goes along with the, the flower or the stem or the vine whatever you feel like painting so we're gonna put these hearts in little ones big ones small ones could have put a bunch of them in here together one little section change it up we got little teeny teeny ones, little teeny weeny weeny ones, and big ones. The big ones could have polka dots. Remember we talked about this, the bigger polka dots. They could have a line inside of them. 
You can have whatever you want to put inside of them. Stripes, plaids. I want you to have fun. This is supposed to be fun. This is not supposed to be serious. We have days of serious watercolor and we have days of fun watercolor. And right now we're doing fun. All right, so I just filled all those in. We can grab the same greens that we had before. And we can start putting in some vines and curve them with the leaves, curve them. Now there's no drawing for this because I really just feel like you guys could create this. I'm just gonna kind of see how I'm moving the paper around to curve the curve the vine at the stem and then you can add the little leaves. And my leaves are fairly wet, so I'm gonna have to take them up and put it on the paper towel. It's got too much wet. I'm just curving and adding leaves. You can add really big ones actually if you didn't want to add just small ones. Really big leaves. Also. Small ones, big ones, tiny ones. I want you guys just to play around with all the different variety, different tonality of greens too. So I'm going up here and mixing up a darker green, adding some blues, some Prussian blue to my greens, and then we have a darker green. Really just want to fill up this whole heart. We have some stems going on behind that one. See how we put that one in behind that flower? And then put the leaves going behind it, just like that. I'm going to be filling up this page. Oh, not page, but piece of art with all the greens, the leaves. See, we got little teeny ones here because those hearts are tiny. Connect that. We can have bigger ones. Not all the leaves have to connect to the hearts too. You can just have leaves that are just kind of like loading. Like here, I can do a little squirrel and add some leaves to that. It looks like a real vine. A little squirrel here. You're gonna just embellish what you feel like it needs. Add a big leaf back here. See, it's really filling up now, right? When we remove that masking fluid, it's going to be so much fun. I always like to remove the tape or the masking fluid. I feel like it's like a rebirth or like a makeover kind of situation with the painting. It just feels fun. And again, you can do the same thing with the leaves here that we did in the first one if you want to add that detail of a darker leaf over the, the value of the lighter colored leaf. You can do that. I'm going in and just changing up some of these leaves. They don't have to be all light. Some of the hearts aren't connected. It's a good thing if you're going to have them connected, you'd have them all connected. It's either nothing at all, right? I'm just going in and adding some more greens to fill in the white spaces. You can add more hearts. It's just another look that you can create that's different than your typical hearts with flowers. Hearts within hearts, right? Let me go back in and add some more hearts. You can take this pink, this Sprite Rose, and water it down. And since you're on the white spaces, I might just go in and add some hearts just right in there. If they're overlapping the other heart, that's fine. I kind of like that. Again, you can add little stripes to some of them, dots, big dots, little dots. It's just going to change up the whole entire look. I'll add a little element to it. Make this one a little bit darker. You want a variety of the color too. So we're almost there. We can peel off the fun masking fluid. You might want some hearts even really much darker than the other ones. I think the darker ones should be tiny because then it's not overpowering. 
the big ones. Little tiny hearts. Look like that. I think I filled pretty much with this one a little bit darker. Filling up the page, as we say. I've got a few white spots. I'll just go in and grab some of that pale pink and put in some little pale hearts. I think I'd rather have more pink than green, so I'll just go and fill it with the little hearts that are pink. Down here seems not enough light green, so I'm going to grab some of this green. You have to look around and kind of see what's missing. Step back sometimes. I'll just add some green stems just to brighten up that section. But pretty much, I think we're there with this fun little creation. All right, so we're gonna let that dry and peel off the masking fluid. Okay, now that that's dry, grab a rubber cement pickup, or if you don't want, you can just use your tape. This thing's also like $4 on Amazon. I have a link in my description box for the uh, rubber cement pickup. It's just so much easier than using tape and your finger. It just picks it up much cleaner. Look at that. They look like a coordinating set, right? You want them to kind of coordinate a little bit. You could have different papers though. I could have a red paper I put it on. Put it on a pink paper, you know. Either way, it looks great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick Valentine's Day tutorial. Like I said, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the Tracebook for this. And I have a bonus one that's uh, floral that's going a different way. Um, here's the tracing for it. Like that. I don't know if you can see it. But, um, yeah. Otherwise, pretty much hearts and leaves and stems. And look how cute that is. And if you didn't want to just do this in the paper, you could cut this out. Like I said, you can just paint over the heart. Just draw the heart where it's going to be and just cut it out. And that would have a really cool look too. You could just have a bigger one and have it like that. So, and this doesn't require to have it on um, expensive paper, really cheap paper, and you can fold that in half. Even the craft paper really, because it's just a simple flat, you know, design. So thank you guys for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by and I hope you subscribe to my channel. And like I said before, um, check out my Patreon, the link is in the profile. And oh, so please check out my um, other channel. It's called Amazing Art. It's an acrylic channel. It's in the, there's a link in the description box on the about page. I do like palette knife just demos over there. Um, it's too much to do two channels with talking uh, and editing. So um, I saw just demo what I paint. It's kind of fun. So go check it out. Thanks guys. Have a great day. If you have any questions leave them in the comment section. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.